Think back to the last time you were in a hospital. What do you see? Maybe you walk through clear glass doors into a gleaming white lobby. You see doctors in white coats, stethoscopes draped around their necks. You see nurses in blue scrubs, something a little bit like this. Maybe you haven't actually been in a hospital in a little while, but you've watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy in house. And so you can just picture those same doctors and nurses flirting off in corners of the hospital, solving medical mysteries. Well, I've spent the last five years working in and with hospitals, and that's not what I see. In fact, every time I would walk into a new hospital, I would go to the door and put my hand out for the handle, and I would hesitate before I opened. Do I really want to go inside? Hospitals have a problem, and this problem is killing us. 99,000, 99,000 people every year are killed by this problem in the United States. One in 20, one in 20 patients who step foot into a hospital will be affected by this problem. What is this problem? Do you know? It's not common knowledge. There's a good chance that you don't. Hospital acquired infections. Hospital acquired infections are infections that a person did not have prior to entering the hospital and which they would not have otherwise contracted had they not been in a hospital. They are almost entirely preventable. And yet, in 2020, they will kill 99,000 people in the United States. That's one person every five minutes. That's two times the number of people who will be killed in car accidents this year. That's three times the number of people who will be killed by guns in the United States in 2020. How can this happen? Well, there is a, a system that is broken in the hospital, and I'm gonna show you what that is. So let's think again about our hospital here. We walk inside and we look around, and there's something that we cannot see, and it's everywhere in the hospital. Germs. But these aren't your normal germs. These are not the germs that you'll find down at Starbucks or at your local office building. These germs are what are called superbugs. And these superbugs go by many names. MRSA, Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, Candida auris, CRE, VRE, and they are deadly. To put this in perspective for you, everybody now knows about this 2019 novel coronavirus. Well, if you catch the coronavirus, you have a 2% chance of dying. If you catch MRSA or C. diff or Candida auris or one of these other superbugs, you have up to a 30% chance of dying. These superbugs are also widespread. So as of today, March 3rd, 2020, approximately 90,000 people have been infected with the coronavirus. And that's worldwide. But just this year, and just in the United States, 1.7 million people will be infected with one of these superbugs that leads to a hospital-acquired infection. So you don't need to get into a plane and fly off to Wuhan, or you don't need to get into a cruise ship that's stuck off the coast of Japan to be exposed to some of the world's deadliest germs. All you have to do is get into a car and drive down to your local hospital. So let's come back again to our hospital here. It's a beautiful hospital, and we walk inside. There's something that we don't see when we're in this hospital. What we don't see is the people who are dedicated to cleaning up the superbugs. I'm going to call these people our superheroes. And who are these superheroes? Are they our doctors or our nurses, our hospital administrators? No. Our superheroes are the environmental services staff. They are the janitors and the housekeepers of the hospital. So I'm going to tell you a story about one of these superheroes. Her name is Marie. So Marie is a mother of four children. She works three jobs, part-time jobs, at minimum wage, just to barely make ends meet. She tells herself she can keep it all together, but she's exhausted. She's probably slept on average about four hours every night for the past God knows how many weeks. But she's not just exhausted from the lack of sleep. She's exhausted from the heroic job that she does in the hospital. So let's take a minute to consider 
everything that Marie needs to do every time she walks into a new hospital patient room to clean it. And she has to do this over and over again throughout the day. So Marie walks into this hospital room. She has to strip the linens from the bed. She then has to inspect the mattress, make sure that there are no punctures or holes or other issues with the mattress. That's very important. She then has to remake the bed with fresh linens. She then has to disinfect every single surface within that hospital room. So everything from the light switches, the doorknobs, the bedside table, the overbed table, the bed rails. She has to disinfect pull cords, all of the medical equipment, any chairs in their arm rails. She then has to go into the bathroom and she has to disinfect the sink, the faucet, the drain, the toilet, the guardrails on the side of the, of the toilet. She then has to disinfect the pull cords in there and then disinfect and mop the floor in the patient room and in the bathroom. How much time do you think we should give Superhero Marie to do this job? And I'll give you a hint. So in the hotel industry, housekeepers are given on average 30 minutes to turn a room in between guests. But it, hotels are not a critical care environment. Hotels don't have patience. In hospitals, Marie is only given 10 minutes, just 10 minutes to change this patient room and do all those critical things that need to be done. 10 minutes. Just imagine the next time you go into a hotel, you think that the housekeeper only took 10 minutes in between cleaning, cleaning the room between you and the prior guest? Now imagine that that prior guest had a deadly colon infection? I mean, those rooms are not clean. It's really disgusting. So there's something else that you don't see about Marie, and that is that she is not respected in this hospital, and neither is her job. Just yesterday, she was yelled at by a nurse for not turning an operating room quickly enough, even though she knew that moving any faster would seriously compromise patient safety. Marie also has not been given the right tools for her job. She's been given disinfectants that are ineffective. They're the cheapest possible disinfectants, and they don't work against the superbugs that we're concerned about. She's given mops and wipes that come back from the laundry contaminated. She just reintroduces whatever she took out yesterday back into the hospital environment. Marie was also never trained properly. The prevalent feeling among hospital administrators is why would we invest in training people for this role? This is easy, anybody can do it, it's not important. All of these things, the lack of a proper paycheck, the lack of respect, the lack of tools and lack of training and the lack of a, a, enough staff to actually do this job right has contributed to an environment where Marie just hates this job. How could she not? How can you blame her? All of these factors are within a hospital's control and yet nothing is done about this. And in fact, the very first place that most hospitals look when they want to trim their budget is at the Environmental Services Department. So where does this leave us? Okay. On the one hand, we have our super bugs that are extremely deadly. On the other hand, we have our superheroes. And we've created a situation where we have tied the hands of our superheroes behind their backs. We have made it impossible for them to do their job. It's no wonder that the super bugs are winning in this battle versus these superheroes. All of this right now is abstract. This isn't real but the consequences of this are real. So let me show you what you can see. This is Emma Grace Brew. Emma contracted a MRSA infection when she was a newborn at a hospital in Louisiana. She had a twin brother. Her twin brother also contracted an infection. He died when he was 14 days old. But Emma lived on. She had permanent damage to her legs, her lungs, and her heart. She was in and out of the hospital for the first few years of her life. When she was three and a half, she went back into the hospital for yet another surgery to her leg. This time, when she was in the hospital, she contracted pneumonia. The doctors told her parents that because the MRSA had so devastated her immune system when she was a newborn, there was probably nothing they could do. And in fact, Emma died just days shy of her fourth birthday. And this, this is what happens every five minutes. 
But there is hope. There is something that we can do. So for the past five years, I've been working on a company that addresses some of these issues. And I know what you're thinking. We're sitting here in Silicon Valley. There must be some sort of high-tech solution to this problem. But what I love about this solution is that it can be low-tech. So my company, we developed a platform of tools and training that we could actually plug into a hospital to help address those two issues out of the five that I mentioned earlier. And just by addressing those two issues, we were able to reduce infections by over 30% in all the hospitals that we worked with. But I'm not here to talk about my company. I'm here to talk about the three things that I think all of us in this room can do to actually make a difference and help solve this problem. So what are those three things? The first thing is awareness. That's what we're doing here right now. We need to talk about this issue. We need to shine a light on it. Hospitals have a vested interest in keeping this issue in the dark, and it's up to all of us to bring it out of the shadows and into the light of day. The second thing we need to do, we need to get hospitals to change how they deal with their environmental services department. We need them to fix these issues and take them seriously, and then we need to hold them accountable for doing that. So how can you hold a hospital accountable? There are now great resources online. Hospital Compare is one of the best. It's put together by the government. And you can actually go onto this website and you can compare your local hospital versus regional and national benchmarks and see how it stacks up in terms of infection rates. We all have to remember that we are consumers of healthcare as patients and as the loved ones of patients. We need to send a message to hospitals that as customers, we can take our business elsewhere if they don't shape up and fix this infection issue. And the third thing we need to do comes down to respect. So I mentioned that my company has a training component to it. One of our best trainers who works with the environmental services staff in the hospital told me a story that totally changed my perspective on this. And so he told me that in the, when he would go into the hospital, he was having a lot of trouble. He felt like he wasn't getting through to these environmental services staff, to the janitors and the housekeepers. And he did one simple thing at the beginning of each training session that totally changed the mindset in that room and shifted how he interacted with the housekeepers in the training sessions. He started each session by saying, purpose over paycheck. Purpose over paycheck. And just those three things totally changed the dynamic. And I think what he did was he was showing respect. He was showing respect for the environmental services workers and showing them that they have a purpose in this job and it is important. And so I think the next time all of you are in the hospital, you should say thank you when you see the janitor or the housekeeper in that hospital. Show them the respect they deserve and, the, and show them that you understand the incredibly important role that they have in keeping patients safe. Thank you.